Never spend a single dime on lol And if you step into a strong, go expect a brawl All slander, mad specialist He's precise, doesn't tolerate estimates The man's addicted by every hero You can tell cause his bank account's stuck at zero And last but not least, your host pornophobia Picks an 80 carry, and he's on ya He's got the full mount, ground and pound Don't get excited, it's not as sexy as it sounds That's your whole team, enjoy the podcast Put your headphones on, we'll have a blast We'll check your email and Twitter, of course Just don't ask us how four guys make a try for us that's right, don't ask us for how four guys make a Triforce, especially on Trinity Force Podcast, episode number 29, with Optimus Tom Ranhurt and Dur Oslander. Well, I was going to say all dancing in the background, however, Oslander is not dancing right now. So He actually is, you just can't see it. <laughs> don't tell him what to do. Don't tell him what to do. Oslander, are you dancing, bro? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting watching Optimus Tom dance. Ruin the illusion. <laughs> yeah. So you guys, obviously, I will tell you again, are watching Trinity Force Podcast, episode number 29. If you are watching this live, you'll see we actually put our cameras on this week. We are trying once again with the cameras, and hopefully the podcast audio won't sound crazy afterwards, because we're actually doing something different with that. So this whole episode 29 is like an experiment. It's more of an experiment to see how long I can get these guys to sit here and talk about League of Legends, even though Diablo 3 came out today. I'm about to kill King Learic. I really, really, really need you not to do this to me. <laughs> so I'm going to try to make this podcast be as long and excruciating as possible. If I can go two hours with this podcast, I've done something right. Oh, uh, that's fine. I mean, I'm all ready to talk about League of Legends. I don't know about Ranhurt because his time is, like, precious. <laughs> very precious. <laughs> I'm all set. So. Luckily, I gr- gr- was grinding through the beta pretty much, so it's like... It's it easy. Won't take me long to get through King Leoric. <laughs> of course, it is Tuesday, May fifteenth. I didn't say that, so any of those guys don't know it is the Diablo three release day. As I said, we are the official podcast of GGC and LeagueCraft.com. That is GG Chronicle, and I'm going to take it over to Ranhurt to give him one more week of what this podcast is sponsored by. Hey, this podcast is actually still sponsored by Audible.com. So you can go to http colon slash slash audibletrial.com slash podcast And uh, audible.com is a great uh, site there, a little service that you can get um, audiobooks from. They have over 100,000 titles for you to choose from. And you get a 30-day trial. If you use our link, we get money. So that's great. It's like <laughs> a win-win. And uh, you actually will get credit one credit for a free book. So uh, I actually uh, am semi-proud to say that I uh, took us up on this offer and uh, read, uh, listened to The Hunger Games. So that was a book I probably wouldn't have read in, you know, like actual reading, but I was able to listen to it like on my phone, on the way to work, in my truck, uh, while I was at work and stuff. And uh, I enjoyed it. The quality was great. It was uh, it was a fun time. So uh, at the very least, you should take us up on the, the free, you know, trial and then just you know, do whatever you want to do after that. Oh, um, but, uh, but everything was good. So. Well, there you go. Uh, audibletrial.com forward slash T-Force podcast. Please check it out, guys. If you guys are interested in any kind of audio books, whatever, you are supporting us by checking out that link, and we are going to be turning that around and bringing it back to you. Speaking of turning around and bringing it back to you, we have an AD carry competition. We've only had a couple people sign up out of the <laughs> numerous listeners that we have. And for those who don't know what it is, this is a North American only. I'm sorry, all my you know European listeners, we don't have a level 30 account there. If you have one that we can use, like if two of us can use and you don't care about giving it to us, don't. I didn't say that out loud, but uh, we will you know, very happily take over and use your account. Anyways, this is a 2v2 bottom lane versus myself, Ponophobia, and either Dirt Auslander or Wrecker N. It just depends who can be on the day that it happens. Uh, what more the fuck? Than- more likely it'll be Dur Oslander since he is the podcast. He is the podcast support right now, but who the hell knows what time we can actually get this. We do want somebody of. to win, right? Well, of course. Have you seen my uh have you seen my misfortune? Your misfortune's pretty good. My misfortune's pretty badass. But you know, yeah, I shouldn't just, really be saying that. That's why you need to have me supporting him. Yeah, just so ban his misfortune and then it's GG. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's got nothing else. The joke today. Pain, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, the joke today was uh Oslander asked me, what would you do if they ban your misfortune? I said, all F4. He goes, all right. So <laughs> and I said, I'll get back in there. I said, all right, sorry. That was, that was, that was bad. That was bad. So now what we do? Ban misfortune, all F4. <laughs> I need my misfortune. So, you got a pretty good Varus. You got a good, you got a good everything. Everything but Ash? The only one that actually gives you props, and you should listen to our games, because all we do is yell at each other. <laughs> it's awful. 
I'm just gonna let Ren hurt jungle more often because I can't see what he does when he jungles because no one ever visits bottom lane, so he could be doing the worst ever. As long as I don't see deaths coming up, it's great. I wasn't doing much of anything. <laughs> farming, not getting killed, not diving towers, not really participating in ganks and showing up That's late game. Hey guys, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> jungle, the anti Ren hurt. Yeah, really. <laughs> oh. But he can't dive towers because he's not near him the entire time. Yeah, no, I can dive him. <laughs> Challenge accepted, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so a 2v2 bottom lane. I need you guys to email us at feedback at trinityforcepodcast.com or catch us on Twitter at tforcepodcast. Let us know if you guys want to take a part in this. The winner of the contest will win a NASA skin, and I'm not sure since Auslander is not here this week. Do we have Riot Points, Auslander? Yes, we do. We have uh, $10 Riot Point cards. Uh, NA only, though, so... Oh, yeah. Once again, this is all NA, unfortunately. But, you know, North American, right. if you guys want to get on this, as long as you are not part of GG Chronicle or any of that, you guys can take a part of it. It is 2v2 bottom lane, a traditional AD carry versus a traditional support. The first person to either take out the tower or kill either the support or myself, Ponophobia. More than likely, you're going to get more points if you kill me first because I like to get out of position and all that good stuff. But... Uh, there's, you know, there are some rules to this. Supports can only pick up gold pretend items. You know, the traditional support route wards and whatnot. I know wards aren't going to be that great in this two v two competition. Yes, there are some flaws. We have realized this, but and, so, <laughs> and AD carries can do any item build they want. Now, I'm kind of on the fence about people building Tristana AP or not, and I'm going to leave that up to the judges of Ranherd, Optimus, Tom, and Auslander. Do it. So in, any any build they want. Bottom line, any build doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't shit. matter. Otherwise, how am I supposed to kill you with my Rage Blade Twitch? No, that's exactly And right. how are you supposed to, like, not play AD Annie? No, what? Yeah, that AD Annie game. That was amazing until mid-game. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> OP, man. OP. OP until mid-game. So, yeah, any any route you want for AD carries, I don't care if you build tank and want to take out the tower before we can kill you, go for it. You know, do what you think you're going to be able to kill the best. And the winner is going to be judged on the amount of time it takes you to kill me, The how, you know, how cleanly you kill me, the amount of skill that was involved in it, you know, the amount of time that it would take to kill the tower. There's going to be a whole bunch of things that are going to be brought into this, and we might have more than one winner, but the team is going to win a NAS uh, NASA skin each, and I don't know about points. Uh, Auslander has taken care of all this, so Auslander, do you want to take take care of Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do a NASA skin each, and I guess $10 in riot points each. What the hell? What What's the hell? Like I said, if you guys sign up, yeah, if you guys wow. sign up for the audibletrial.com, we will we're going to turn that money around and give back to you guys anyway because we're just trying to, you know, we're just Whoa. trying to get more listeners. What? Huh? Yeah, we're going to turn that money back around, the $10 turn each. Turn your money back around. Yeah, right. <laughs> Make sure I still get my portion of it. I yeah, ran here like better beer. Spending it on those greedy bitches. 8% alcohol is enough for rent hurt. No. <laughs> He's feeling 28%. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ranter just I did have one of those the other day. Oh 120 minute that was aged for an extra three years. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> just around 24, 25%. <laughs> Sorry. Aren't you, aren't you better <laughs> off just like drinking Purell at that point? Mmm. Yum. Yum. Straight alcohol. Yeah, from it was the like bottle. Purell mixed sense. with uh, Mr. Clean. <laughs> and I actually lost hair. I was in the process of becoming Mr. Clean from drinking it. Oh my god. <laughs> you sure that's just not age? <laughs> no. Face. That's oh, a face. face. Not age or stress. <laughs> well, Definitely 120 pocket. minutes. <laughs> well, right, so Davis. yeah, you guys, email us. AD carry competition. We want more people in this. We've got a couple signups, but I'm trying to get at least five of you guys together out of the number of listeners that we have. Don't you know? Don't be afraid to come in here and just try to take the tower out. I mean, you ha everybody has a chance to win. It's not like I'm a pro, so I'm not amazing. I'm just that's all I play. So just you know, take that into consideration. But moving on to actual discussion topics for this week, I want to step into a listener voicemail we have from one of our friends Cody, he usually, you know, leaves us an email, leaves us a voicemail, and I'm going to play his quick voicemail right now, it's only 18 seconds long, then I'm going to recap it so, here we go Hey G Force, Cody again I got a question for you, because my internet's been cut off and I have nothing but time to think so, uh, I want to ask you what kind of champion do you think the game needs more of and why? I'm interested to see here what you have to say. So, for those who may not have been able to understand what Cody was saying, he wanted to know what champions that uh, do we think that League of Legends needs more of, and why. So I'm going to let the floor open to any of you guys to take that. 
what, mm. what kind of champions do we need that, more that, of? That was his question. What kind of champion? champion? What kind of champions? He wants to know, but if you want to spin the question some other way, Tom, go for it. I was going to say, because I could go for a champion that has a hard CC, a self-heal, a very powerful <laughs> damaging spell, and an AoE disabling ult. That'd be great. I think it's balanced. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd play it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ranhurd wants a tower immune champion. Yeah. Yeah, you can just I want, play I want Poppy. A burrower. You know, champion does something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. something huh. that can just burrow in the ground and just be invulnerable. He wants lurkers. Yeah, I want a champ that's like a sniper, so I could just stay in fountain and just take people out across the map. Oh my god! <laughs> like, like, I guess kind Starcraft of Starcraft uh, Two siege tank. Yeah. yeah, there we go. Actually, that's that's kind of interesting. I do want a champion that kind of like Zareth, but a little more extreme. I want to see a champion that does something for his first couple levels, like almost like Nidalee. You know how Nidalee can be built AP or AD, depending on what you do, and if you build her AD, her Cougar form skills are a lot more powerful than her non-Cougar form spells and vi vice versa. I want another champion like that, where someone that kind of like plays one way at what if you build them one way but has a skill that can kind of transform the rest of them so that the other build is not bad either but you know like AP Nidalee in the beginning of the game you know she could build AP right out of the gate and her spear does massive amounts of damage but the AD version really can't do anything until you hit six and switch to that cougar form and start dealing damage with her swipes and her claw and her Q and her E mixed together so I want a champion that can be built like one way or another but kind of reverse. I kind of want a champion that does better in the beginning game as AD, but if you built them AP once they hit like that level 6 like in Italy, they just completely turned around. I want something like that. Like a transform champion. A, a transform champion. Do you want a champion that can transform in multiple forms or just one that you can use for AP or AD? Uh, well, I think one with multiple forms would be a little bit too complex. Like, the, the champion that comes to mind that when that happens is the Invoker from Dota 2, where he has, like, 22 pre-programmed spells into the game or something like that. It's probably a lot less than that, but it's only, like, a handful. It's, like, 12. I, but, I was um, thinking of a champion. I like the champion. Uh, there's a Dota 2 champion, or a Dota champion, not Dota 2, a Dota champion that had all passives. He just had, like, five or six passives, and that's all he had. No skills I could level up. I really like that idea. And the passives level up as he levels up. That would be pretty cool too. Um, I think I think it would be interesting to see a range carry do something like that because then depending on what items you built or what passives you leveled up, it would play differently than some different range carries. Or you could play like your standard AD carry build with like Infinity Edge and everything. Only it would do it better, but he'd have absolutely no skill harass and absolutely no escape, so he'd be super super like vulnerable. Right. That'd be pretty cool too. Now, do you think if someone had, like, only, only passives, that he'd be just, like, an aura champion? Kind of like a Sona, but they didn't have any actives? Is that what we're looking at here? That's one way to look at it, too. I'm, I'm kind of thinking of it as more like a champion that's meant to do some, like, do damage in fights that would have all these auras. So almost kind of like a passive jungler, where maybe, like, one of his skills, you know, was kind of like Trundle's passive, whereas things died or things did damage to him, like Hecarim, he healed off of it. And then his other skills could therefore, like, increase his armor and magic resistance, and then maybe have some sort of, like, Thorn's aura deal, like Thorn Mail or something. And then his ultimate would maybe... I don't know, maybe bring all the auras together to do something pretty cool, depending on which ones you had sure. leveled up. So he'd have one activatable and, skill. Yeah, but he would... And the thing is, it'd be interesting, like, maybe you could play him as a jungler or, like, a top laner, but he had, like, no gank potential, but later stages of the game, he was, like, unkillable because he was super, super tanky. Or maybe you built auras that made him deal a lot of damage, but he couldn't disable, so he used kind of like a glass cannon. It'd be pretty cool. See, when you start looking at those, though, the problem is with aura champions is they have no weight. There's no stun. There's no gap closer. Besides, like, extra speed bonus maybe off an aura or something, I think that's what a lot of these champions that we've seen lately have a problem with is they might have a gap closer but they don't have a stun or they, you know, they don't have enough damage because they have the gap closer you know and they some some champions kind of rely on a certain item like uh transitioning into a, like a little thing about Hecarim again like we talked about last week Hecarim doesn't really do anything until you have a trinity force basically mm -hmm. like he he has no damage potential you know he people say he jungles fairly well and he has like decent ganks it's it's not terrible he's not the worst jungler in the world but I just don't see him dealing any damage until he gets a Trinity Force. Like, he can run in with his E and gank, and, you know, it's pretty cool. And if you can't, he punishes overextensions like Udyr, but he doesn't have the hard CC that Udyr has in these ganks. So his ganks are a little subpar, whereas champions like Shivana that don't really have the CC make up for it with raw damage, he 
doesn't really do that. He doesn't make up for no CC with raw damage. He has an ultimate that has like one second of fear on it, which is a cool idea because you don't really have a jungler besides Fiddlestick that has a fear on him. So it's interesting concept to see, especially because it is a really big gap closer because it could charge from like basically from a bush into a lane. You know, you hit the champion still and deal all this AOE damage too. So it's really interesting. But he's super, super item dependent. Like, unless the enemy team is, like, being super, super overextendy and they're not warding at all, his gank potential is pretty, pretty low. Right. Even lower than Shivana, who has no hard CC. So, you know, the, the thing is, the transitioning from, like, the aura champion or the all-passive champion, you know, he's going to be even that much more item dependent because at least Hecarim has ways to close gaps but not deal damage. This guy might have ways to deal damage but not close gaps. So therefore you have another guy that like he would need some sort of speed boost like boots and phantom dancers just to run faster or something like that mm. or maybe he'd have to get a Shirelius for the speed boost in order to gank you know or it would it, be that's like complex because then you get into like a champion that's like an ash that is one of the more item dependent ad carries but has absolutely no skill set that ash does to counterbalance that it's an interesting look on how a champion could be built, but then you really start looking at what the other champions already in League of Legends do. We're, we're not past 100 champions yet, right? No, I think we're nah. at 92, 93. Okay, I didn't think so. Um, can never... It seems like the champions... Actually, the number of champions have been releasing seems like it's slowed down just a tiny bit, but still. We've had quite a number of new champions, and they've all come with you know unique skill sets. The problem is how well do they scale in late game? How can they do in lane? Like, you see a Hecarim who has the gap closer, and uh, you know, has the kind of the stun, but he just doesn't do enough damage to pick it up. I know I said that before, but I just thinking about like an all passive champion. While it would be really cool to see, I don't think he could get away with only having four passives, five passives. I think he would need like twenty of them to really make him viable. <laughs> you know, and, and they all just level up per level rather than you level them up themselves. It's just I'm, I'm obviously not a champion designer. It just it's very hard to think about how okay you have an all passive champion, you put him in top lane, he has no stun. He has no initiation ability. He just has life steal, movement speed, and farm. And farm. Maybe his passive is like a Nautilus passive where it puts you in place. But when you start initiation, you don't want that right away. You want that when they're running away. You know, you want to be able to keep them mm -hmm. in place. And now you are. It, it's kind of like kind of transitioning here. It's what I've been following with Sejuani. I've been trying to make Sejuani work a lot recently, and I've been talking to a lot of Auslander about it. He keeps telling me how oh she's so shit. She shit this. You know. <laughs> I think she had, you know, people have been telling me Nautilus overshadows her because of his skill set, especially with his E being a great gap closer and him having a great passive that keeps him in place. And Sejuani's passive doesn't, you know, doesn't increase with level. But Sejuani's place right now, I've seen her, is in a very, is in a, is in a team that has lanes that are all going to win and you just need a jungler to fill a fifth spot. Now, that doesn't happen in pro, game, <laughs> pro games. Obviously, but like in the games that we're looking you at, plenty like, of junglers that fill spots. Have you ever played jungle, Ariana? Yeah, exactly. Like you, you, you're just playing it for fun. And like Sejuani, she's very viable because she, I can, if I catch somebody, they're perma slowed. And as long as people around me, the person is dead. The problem is, I need lanes that are all going to win and are not going to be reliant on ganks to continue to win. Everyone needs to be very good, and that's what you get in the pro games. Everybody is good that you're playing against, so the lanes can go either way. So you can't really throw a Sejuani in there because Sejuani can't counter jungle very easily. Sejuani cannot uh, she's not a very good presence once she ganks because she doesn't do any damage you're reliant on your you know your other carry in the in the lane to do the damage all she's there for is the slow now once you get the late game she's great because she has an amazing initiation but like if you put a a mumu in place of her a mumu's actually going to be doing damage especially the research of, of ap and mumu as we've been seeing lately i think actually it's uh kind of interesting whereas you would place like an amumu or a maokai on a team uh, because of their CC or even a Nautilus because of the CC they bring out of the jungle Shijuan is the opposite you want her in a lane that has some form of CC anyway so that she becomes like the Hecarim or the Udyr where you punish over extensions from the enemy team you know she's not a good champion to go in and initiate ganks but she's a good champion to punish because she can close gaps she could get that kind of perma slow going down and her ultimate is actually ridiculous the fact that it can yes. hit multiple targets too it's insane so, you know, like, you just go in there, you you could stun lock them basically with that and then perma slow them. If you have a lane that has some form of CC, like maybe you're going into a bottom lane with like an Ash and a Taric, which you don't normally see all that often, but Ash can slow and Taric can stun. Something that would get that lane to burn Flash 
so that when they did overextend, Shijuani could just decimate them because her perma swell. Sure. The thing is right now, like Shijuani, she really loses out to Flash. Like most junglers will have some sort of hard CC so they can like uh, catch up and stun them after a flash or stun them long enough to deal a lot of damage before they flash. And then you normally like, oh, okay, well, you burn flash, you get did some damage, that's a successful gank. Thing is with Shizwani, they can just flash away and she can't catch them. Well, so what? Well, you know, if you're going to use that argument, what about Amumu? All Amumu has is a bandage toss to get in there, and it's a quick root in place. Sejuani doesn't have the root, obviously, when she initiates with her Q from the jungle. However, she does have a perma slow. So in that in that regard, it puts Sejuani one point ahead of Amumu. However, Amumu is able to actually do damage when it comes to late game because he's doing percentage of life and he scales very well with AP. While Sejuani doesn't have the base stats to make her tanky. The thing is, too, if Amumu. Amumu's a little bit tankier, and if he goes into gank and gets that first hit on a champion, the creeps are going to start focusing him. Mm -hmm. The creeps start focusing him, he can tantrum more often. So he has a way to deal more damage than Shijuani, despite his spells dealing more damage than Shijuani anyway. Okay. So he has a little bit of a way to make up for it. You know, he does, you know, he has the bandage sauce, or he can initiate with the bandage sauce, or he can wait for them to burn Flash and have them stand in his despair before Bandit Saucing to stun them afterward. Which is why you can come in and you can chase them and you can slow them. You can, they can burn Flash and then you can charge after them and slow them, but it's not the one or two seconds of stun that Amumu has that they could still kind of walk away from. And the thing is too, like, and she's also like compared to those other champions like like an Amumu or like any of the other champions that you could argue that just you know you burn flash and that's about it she doesn't clear the jungle nearly as fast enough so if she spends any time out of that jungle for an unsuccessful gank it's gonna be even worse for her compared to someone that can just go back into the jungle like an Amumu and tantrum the creeps and farm up really easily again I got a counterpoint that with Sejuani See, my, the only problem I have with Sejuani is she doesn't have a great initiation like Amumu does and Amumu can do damage Sejuani cannot however Sejuani I've trimed her jungle without a pull on blue or wolves she's clearing jungle 20 seconds slower than, than the Udyr which, in a game of min-maxing, is huge, but it's not paramount when it comes down to it. Because Amumu is running about the same amount of time when he's in the jungle. It's just it comes the difference of he's able to tantrum faster, and you're able to make him tankier. I think that's where the, the, the Sejuani comes down to, is she's not passively tanky. To be able to clear the jungle that quickly, I have to run cooldown reduction glyphs and quints. And I get my W to come up about 1.5 seconds after it falls off. So I have 1.5 seconds of not having anything that's going to slow anybody around me. Now, I just think it all comes back to Sejuani playing her more recently. She's just not naturally tanky. If they made her scale somehow or gave her a little bit, you know, just maybe one or two extra armor when she started or even scale per level on her magic resist better than what she does, if she does any at all now, would would really bring her back into viability. I mean, I like Shizwani in the jungle, personally. I mean, you and I, we casted the DB Gaming games from the yep. North American Amateur League, and we saw Scorpion Blue on jungle Shizwani. He did some pretty nutty things with her. So, like, it's not that she's a terrible jungle. It's the same thing with Hecarim. He's not a useless champion, but there are other people that can do what he does better. Sure. And the thing is with Shizwani, they, they give you this incentive to build health on her with her W, because her W is going to deal more damage the more health you have. So you're kind of inclined to be like, well, I could build tanky then, and I could go, you know, like, like more of like an Amumu-ish build, you know, maybe not the Abyssal Scepter kind of build, but go for, you know, like a Heart of Gold and maybe like a Randuin's eventually and get a little bit tankier out of the jungle. But then you lose, you know, first off, you lose the esports dog in the background, Bart. <laughs> but um, you lose out on the fact that, you know, you, she kind of could play like a Maokai that goes like Shirelias and Randuins, but if you're going to stack health to try to deal damage and be tanky, you're not getting the Shirelias, and then you're losing that benefit. So she kind of falls in between, you know, like the Maokais in the jungle and the Amumus and the Udyrs in the jungle, where she does something good, but she doesn't do it as well as the other champion. Mm -hmm. So she kind of gets stuck in like this little center space where it's like, well, you could find a place for her, but all these other champions fit into that place easier i guess i would say like you know we've seen a lot of jungle alistar because of his early ganks and his cc people like you said odd ones have been playing nautilus we saw last night in the the curse tournament legion took on dignitas dignitas ran jungle nautilus three games in a row so 
that there's the reasons that people are running these champions, you know, lots of CC or clear times or whatever they may be, they've been practicing these champions over and over because they see some sort of result from it. I'm not saying, you know, like they just don't play Shizwani, but maybe they've taken into account the champion's skill set and just figured out, well, she does this good, but maybe Nautilus does that little part better. Or sure. maybe Alistar does a little part better. So she's, she's just, like, her and Hecarim, I view as basically the same champion. They, they have potential to do something really good, but they just kind of fall off the mark a little bit. What do you, what do you guys think, Ranhurt, Auslander? Um, my thought is, I don't know how Optimus Tom turned a conversation on what kind of champions we want to see into a long conversation on Sejuani. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand how that, nobody wants that damn champion, and somehow that topic has turned into a Sejuani conversation. Because I've been trying to jungle Sejuani recently. Because I've been what trying to find a place for What we want to see? We, no one wants to see fucking Sejuani. I gotta be I honest with you. <laughs> shit. Actually, I do want to see her on the end of the fucking team. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Every game I played against Sejuani, though, I go, oh, she's nothing. She can't do anything. And then we get decimated because her fucking ultimate comes in and just locks everybody in place. It's like a giant Ash ultimate that's Learned better because you can actually hit it. Yeah, learn to dodge, really. Oh, it's an ash, yeah. it's an ash <laughs> error that doesn't go across the entire map. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, like, I don't even want to get into the Sejuani talk because I have no freaking clue. But, um, you know, I guess chance that I'd like to see is more uh, tanky, bursty AP mids. That's what I want to see. I want to see lots of those. I like. Those. Of course you do. They don't need to be tanky. Oh, you said tanky, of course. Wait. Wait, you want you want a champion that's like Galio but not as tanky? No. And not not as, you want someone. Wait. I want yeah. Want, I want a, I want a Galio slash Mord slash Vlad, but more damage okay. and more CC. So, so you want a champion that when you dive towers you can just run away? Yes. And get the kill still. <laughs> okay. That's the important part. So, wait. So you want a champion that has massive burst damage, a high health and armor count, and has yeah. a damage over time spell that you can just walk away from after you dive the tower? Yeah. I want more Poppy. That's what I want. I want Poppy ranged. I'm going to quit this Skype call in a second. <laughs> 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 Alright, wait, wait, wait. Is it going to look like one of those troll dolls like that your daughter might want one right now? Yeah. Like a little yeah. Uh, then, then no. No, no gremlins, no trolls, no no yordles, no... The shopkeeper remake, that could stay because he has an infinity edge in his backpack and it's awesome. Oh but, uh, no, no range Poppy. If, like, if I swear, if they just make a new character and it's Poppy but she throws her hammer like, ho like Thor and it comes back, I'm done playing this game. <laughs> They're not even gonna re they're not gonna make a new champion. It's gonna be a a poppy redesign. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna Listen, be poppy it's version two. Is and everything. It's just gonna be ranged. <laughs> Listen, yeah, the only <laughs> redesign somehow. The only redesign of Poppy I want to see is I want to see Poppy's Noxus skin get remade to look like she's a member of the Insane Clown Posse, so she's that degenerate that no one wants to really play her anymore. Doesn't That's all I want to see. Don't we already have like a goth Poppy or something like that? Yeah, like, yeah, Noxus Poppy. It like. It looks like she did her makeup as a 13-year-old and never took it off. <laughs> All right, enough of the poppy hate. Lost no, Lander. Honestly, like, I don't know. We, we had this conversation kind of a little right, while ago it. about what kind of champion we wanted to see. And it was before, um, you know, before we got uh, Lulu. So we were saying, oh, we'll see a support champion. They've been talking about it forever. And we got Lulu. I think Lulu is cool, and I haven't played her, but, you know, we see her in a few games, and, and she even played the high uh, levels and, and at the pro level and stuff, so a pretty cool champion. Um, but I'd, I'd like to see a little bit more. I mean, I, not out of Lulu. I'd like to see a little bit more uh, support champions. It, it, Riot went, again, in a direction of, um, with, with Summer Heal kind of trying to take away that sustainable um, champions, you know, the sustainable supports, and uh, well, in doing so, they they kind of made in taking and nerfing summoner heal. They actually made sustainable supports a little more important. So I kind of disagree with um, them doing that. And uh, so, anyways, I, I'd like to see maybe another support champion, somebody with a little more utility, and, and, or not more utility, but maybe different utility. And uh, so that would be my vote. I think we've got a lot of great choices at, at AP. We've got a lot of great choices at AD carry, range carry, right. and, and a lot of great choices for a bruiser and jungler, so if anything, we're still lacking in um, more dedicated supports. 
Interesting enough, the new support that came out, which is Lulu, has been seen more played in the jungle and top lane than I've seen her play support recently. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, she has an interesting passive, and I think that's, like, her ratios and her passive together make her more of like a, well, you know, the, the thing is with support champions, they are the naturally, they're the most overpowered champions in the game. Because if you think about it, they have skill sets that are useful without building attack damage or ability power. They have builds that will scale so naturally into the late game that they're still useful despite only getting items that give gold per 10. Right. They don't need items to give them statistic buffs to make them work. And that's what makes uh, support characters one of the hardest champions, I think, for the team to design. You saw what, what happened with Lulu. Lulu has a skill set where she slows. You know, it slows by a lot, but it's not very long. It deals an okay amount of damage, kind of like Janna's Tornado. Janna's, if you ever take a look at Janna's uh, ratios, they're ridiculous. Same thing with Lulu, only because of the way Lulu's skill set worked out, especially the passive buff on Whimsy, if you use it on an ally, increasing movement speed and adding ability power, it just kind of makes it so... It's that fine line between being a balanced support and being a champion that can go into some sort of other role. So, like more dedicated supports would be good. I like I would absolutely like, I would love to see it, but I can understand why you know the designers haven't done it yet because it's 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 hard. It's difficult. You can't <laughs> make a champion. You can't make a champion that's so naturally overpowered that they're balanced by making them get crappy items. Right. Like it's it's ridiculous. It's like. It's like if Ash didn't need an Infinity Edge, so all she did was buy Shirelius, you know? It's like, it, it, it doesn't make sense when you're designing it, so it's really hard to do. But I actually kind of like what Lulu did, where she was uh, supposedly a support champion. It can still play as a great support champion in certain comps, but she took that role and transformed it into something else. I mean, Dignitas has done it with Soraka and... You know, we see like people like Prolly on Legion doing it with Janna now. You know, they take these characters and play them outside of their role, but they do both pretty well. So I, you know, like going with like my champion that could like transform from one way to another. I want to see a champion that's like meant to play one position, but then doing an another one. Like, <laughs> like maybe. Hi, I'm Freak, you know, and I jungle this character, but she's actually a yeah. support. Exactly! I mean, like, that's that's what I want to see. I want to see more freak characters. I want to see, like, I want to see an AP-based jungler that's not a tank. Interesting. So, you, do you want a Fiddlesticks? Like, okay, I want, like, a Fiddlesticks, but actually does something. Oh, some of this... Well, the problem <laughs> with AP characters is they are now reliant on blue. You counter jungle blue, and now the AP character becomes crap. I mean, well, that's what people thought with Amumu for forever, but now Amumu's made a resurgence. You counter jungle Amumu's blue, he either goes to your enemy blue or takes an early red buff and just decimates you because you don't expect Amumu to slow <laughs> on top of stun. Yeah, I think that's what's really great about Nautilus, besides all of his lockdowns and everything. Mm. You kind of build him AP because of his ratios, uh, most of his skill scale on AP, but you take his shield early, which is not very mana intensive, lets you farm well, and you don't really have to rely on blue. You're obviously going to take blue, but if they take your blue, you just move on and take something else and use that the shield that gives you the dot with your attack. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Nautilus is really great for those reasons. I, I jungled up last night. It was really fun and easy to do. I, mean, I, I went up against a... Um, I don't remember what I went up against. Shaco? Uh, yeah, it was Shaco. Which doesn't really Shaka doesn't really counter jungle too much, or at least this one didn't. Um, mm. So it wasn't really an issue, but it was, it was interesting. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a conversation that'd be left to Morello or somebody else, and hopefully we can have one of those people on in the you know in the near future. They could really tell us, you know, why have you built these kind of champions that we've been talking about? So I'm gonna level, yeah, slander. Yeah, I was gonna kill. I was gonna move the conversation on because I want Auslander to talk a little bit. Auslander and I have been playing some low level games. We have some Smurf accounts that are level six and seven, or seven and eight, respectively. And uh, Auslander and I were kind of talking about this today, and I wanted him to head this conversation if he didn't mind. Yeah, so we we've been playing. Uh, I guess I don't know why, just out of boredom, uh, and it's just uh, interesting, you know, to to have kind of you know not played at that level for a really long time to go back to it and and see the crazy things people do and uh you know the the fighting that still exists i you know you think i remember playing low levels whenever it was and i don't remember like a lot of like i guess fighting in chat but 
in our games that like every single game there was some kind of conflict and uh yeah because someone thinks they know more than you do they could be a smurf or they could just be a new player that thinks they know a lot because they read reddit or something all the time yeah i had some guy tell me that he just went 30 0 and 0 with uh, I think Scion or something. <laughs> Meanwhile, he was like the apps. He was going AD and he was just getting lit up. So it's like I don't know who you were playing that you went 30 0 and 0. But you know, this is like all level. Like at the time, I think we were probably level three or four. It was like you're against level fours. So I don't <laughs> yeah, what can what can you really do? Can you really do that? Yeah. Uh, the I saw it happen once, so therefore it happens all the time. Mentality. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike me, where level 30, my misfortune always goes 21 and 2. <laughs> oh, man. Or, actually, I don't mean to take this away from the smurfing very quickly, but that mentality also translates into higher level ranked matches, where um, I was watching with the, with the new spectator mode, you get to creep on whoever's in the featured match, and I was watching Zingi, who's been known as like a solo middle only f- fiddlesticks player. He was forced to jungle a Moomoo, so he just did his fiddlesticks build on a Moomoo in the jungle. Oh my he God. went boots, double Dorans, but he got a Sunfire Cape, too. Of he course. went for a Sunfire Cape and an Abyssal Scepter and all this stuff, and he went 7-0-2. <laughs> <laughs> That's the right. Maybe a Moomoo does a ton of damage, though. <laughs> it's, it's true, especially with a Sunfire Cape, too. You tantrum, you cry, you Sunfire Cape. It's like all the AoE damage in the world. But, um, like, an hour later... Um, I got a message from Cruiser the Bruiser, top player for Legion, who goes, I just had the worst jungle Aleph star in my game. He said that he saw a Zingi do this and went boots, double Dorans, and then fed, and then we couldn't win. So <laughs> that mentality still exists at like the 2300 ELO range. Where you're just like, oh, I saw it happen once. It has to work. Don't worry about it, guys. It's just kind of funny how, uh, like, you know, like, you see all this stuff happen at the high ELO, and then you go on to these Smurf accounts. Like, I've had a couple friends that have just recently picked up the game, or had to remake accounts for one reason or another. Like, some of them got hacked, and some of them can't keep their mouth shut. So, um, we've, we've been playing some Smurf games. It's really interesting that you take, like, an idea that usually works at high level, and you're like, oh, man, this is gonna be great, you know, I'll just do this, and I'll, like, face stomp people. Like, putting jack-in-the-boxes in the jungler's, like, pattern and stuff like that. Well, even if they have a jungler at low levels, they don't normally follow the normal jungle routes. So there's one game I was playing a Smurf account jungle Shaco, and I'm trying to counter jungle like this Amumu, but he like starts at rates and then goes to wolves and then goes to mini golems and then takes blue buff. So like I go to counter, I go to like place wards in the bush between like uh, place boxes in the bush between like his middle lane on the blue side and the rates, and he just never shows up. I'm like, where is this guy? I have like six boxes in this bush. It would kill him if he ever showed up. He just didn't show. He just went somewhere else. He knew Tom. He just he just like went somewhere else. Like okay, so like I'm gonna like farm and I'm gonna jungle and blah 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 blah. But I was like on a level ten account or something like that, and it took like twice as long to clear the jungle as Shaco because Shaco has like no AOE damage at all. Well, so it was like a terrible experience. We actually lost because of it. Funny that I was talking about that because I wanted to continue to talk about this for low levels. That if you are level between, like, I would say 1 and 20, hell, some are level 1 and 20. Mm. One big thing is that Auslander and I have both seen you can't play AD carries in these levels because people don't let you farm. People, mm. they are so aggressive in every single lane. You need to play champions that are either super tanky and follow some super tanky build with it, or you need to build a champ, or you need a champion that just does so much burst damage that they can't be super aggressive on you. Most people push out the lanes. Really, what I've seen is most people don't understand how the meta works and understand why champions do what they do, and they just need to take more time to read, you know, guides and whatnot. Why are we last hitting and whatnot? This is, it's never going to change in low levels, but because of that, you need to turn around and learn how to last hit and. You need to learn how to last hit and harass at the same time. This is a great time to learn how to last hit and harass because, well, Auslander can talk about it more than I can in the bottom lane. How was your Teemo lane the other day? Um, well, it's one, the one thing I noticed, too, about low-level games are that you'll get someone low on the other team and they just won't go back. And it actually is kind of like a, like a, like screws with your mind because you see them there on, like, an eighth health and you're like, well, I have to... <laughs> have to go for this and you always end up doing something stupid yeah <laughs> you're like well i'll just i just have to hit him twice so i can go into this tower oops son <laughs> but oh uh, yeah bottom i mean i played bottom lane with timo and I, I don't remember who my lane partner was but i think it was like that was another thing like the team comps were just ridiculous i think we had like one ap and then like four range carries um so that, that was interesting like fighting with your teammate for last hits <laughs> But, um, you know, it's 
it was interesting and I guess it was interesting to see like how how different the game is and also like at the same time it's you know it's kind of the same in a way like I mean every game we're in I bring this up again but there was some kind of conflict and it was like some kind of made up conflict that, <laughs> that that didn't exist like we were people wanting to surrender like right away even though the game like the one game I, I think uh, Pwn was playing Olaf and he was pretty fed and the other lanes were losing and they like all just wanted to quit like well no that's it but meanwhile like all the towers are still up and the kills differential wasn't even that bad which yeah a lot of people will see like they get in one team fight and it still happens at level 30 if you get in one team fight and you lose the game isn't over at that point uh, you know you might have yeah. one person like I was Olaf I built two gold pretend I stood up in the top lane I just farmed all day I never was even in the team fight but people want to surrender when that one team fight happens and they don't win and, and we saw that at the very low levels. I sat up in the top lane while Mundo, which was Auslander, ran around and just tried to gank. And yeah, he may have died a couple times because of, you know, the, the whole, oh my god, he's low, I should probably try to, I probably should try to dive him. But uh, in the meantime, I'm on top lane, I'm getting a ton of farm because I know how to play. And even if I didn't, I would probably still have at least half the farm that I had because I had free reign in top lane anyway. And uh, it would, you know, it, it plays mind games with the other teams. So if you're low level and someone tries to surrender after one team fight, say no. There's still time. You know, rally your teammates. Let's all get to middle and all push together. Engage on the 80 carries. Don't attack the tank. And eventually, someone's going to learn. You're not going to win all your games, obviously, because a lot of low levels won't listen, and you kind of need to be able to carry the game yourself anyway. But if you're just starting out, you need to learn how to farm and harass if they're harassing you learn how to learn what your character does harass them back and try to get the last hit on the creeps i think that's the biggest thing that i pulled out of any of this is a lot of people don't try to last hit the creeps unless they are of course smurfs yeah and i remember enough. when i like first started playing like I, I, I you know we've talked about it before but you know, i was the first out of all of us not maybe not tom but i didn't know tom at the time i was the first out of the core group here to, to play the game and uh, you know I didn't know anyone that played the game I kind of just dove into it myself and I never played Dota so it was the first of its kind for me and it was it was really like I was lost like I, I had p sheets of paper where you know I had the champion and then you know the skill level that I should you know the skill order that I should do and then what items I need to buy and what order and I just had them like you know essentially like little mini guides and I you know had like four per p per, per sheet and I had front and back, and I had a whole bunch of these. And, like, I would get into champs, and I had, like, the mastery setups, too. I, I would, you know, write them all out and, like, pretty much draw the trees and say, like, you know, zero, zero, four, zero, and then zero, four, <laughs> you know. Like, I had it all laid out because I just didn't know. And back then, you couldn't save your mastery pages. And so it, it was crazy, it was, you know, and I would, I would be forced into a role, pick a champion, and then, and then I would find the paper and, and get it all together. And then the, I was so methodical and robotic when it came to all that stuff. And I think another hint for the, the new players is just try and, like, slow down, take your time, read some guides. But not only that, just figure out why the guides are telling you to do, you know, X, Y, and Z. Why are they telling me to, you know, rush a Deathfire Grasp on Vigar and, and, you know, these other things? Because if you know the why, then you know... And what cha what time should I fear from that? And why should I do something different and adjust and adapt and 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 work your play that way? And that's really crucial, uh, you know. In addition to learning how to farm and those kinds of things, um, that's another one. Is really learn why you build certain items, why you build certain masteries. You don't really have to worry about runes at that point, but um, those two things are pretty big and and allow you to be flexible and adapt, which is big when you start seeing some very unconventional things at low levels. Yeah, actually, um, that's, that's a really cool point. Uh, first off, I like the idea that you put all the papers up and everything. I think more people when they're trying to learn the game should actually do that because then they have some sort of personal reference as opposed to looking at, like, solomid.net and being like, well, Reginald says I should do this, but I don't get it. And, you know, but if you do something yourself and you can, like, write it out yourself, I know personally, like, I'll, I'll learn, like, if someone teaches me, but then I do it myself or, like, like reteach myself. So, like, as long as I'm doing it, like, I'll start to understand why. And this is actually something that the pros will actually do. I saw when, back when Solo Mid switched over to Twitch, Dyrus was streaming, but he had, like, 20-minute queue times for some odd reason or something like that. And, you know, too high yellow, stuff like that happens when you try queuing at a normal time of the day instead of, like, 4 in the morning. So, um, he went on and made another Smurf account. 
and he was sitting there playing, you know, like whatever free week champions he could, you know, like in the middle lane or the top lane, but he was kind of going through like out loud, you know, he was like talking on the stream, he's like, alright, well, I'm going to play Ari in the middle, and I'm going to buy this item, and I'm going to see how it does, you know, as opposed to doing this, you know, he was like buying like Chalice of Harmony and seeing how that would do, you know, buying the Catalyst and going for Rod of Ages against just going Dorans and like Revolver into Woda and stuff like that, so... Uh, I actually was watching a couple other streams, like I've seen, like, a, a couple members of TSM will go on a Smurf account and play a champion, like, four or five games in a row with a certain item build, and just get a feel for how that champion does with that item build, because low, like, low-level play in normals, you can't, like we said before, you can't really rely on the rest of your team to know what they're doing, it's really all about you and you trying to do everything your champion can to win the game, and you learn the ins and outs of a champion's limitations that way. So, like, you can, if you, like, basically in a nutshell, like, sometimes the best practice on getting better at a champion is to play it in a setting where you have total control of the game state. So you could go into a low-level game, like, for instance, if I wanted to practice, like, my Zareth or something, because I don't see a lot of good Zareths and I want to know the ins and outs of this champion and what he can do and what he can't do, like, get into a low-level game and, like, start smurfing with him, and just, you know, do these different item builds and maybe I'll start pub stomping, which is cool, but then maybe I'll run into a brick wall and it's like, okay, well, why did that not work against the solo middle Skarner? And, you know, like, try to figure figure that out. And even though it's, like, a ridiculous scenario that would never happen in a pro game, you start to learn the limitations. Like, oh, well, Skarner can slow me when I'm standing still, and that's not a good thing, and he can just walk around me and I won't be able to hit my skill by skill shot to stun him. And, okay, well, that's a weakness of Zaret, so I need to be prepared for champions like a dude that or no not to pick them against champions that could do that so it's it's like this it's like putting yourself like in like this little like training room and trying to figure out every single in and out of the character while you are basically the sole outcome of whether you win or lose the game so it's actually really really cool but at the same time it's it's difficult like for pro players i can see why they do it for like me and everybody else i probably don't have the patience for it, because like also, as I said, people are just yelling at each other for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> you, you learn to just tune out the trolls and carry them on your back. Just not me, I, scre I scream back. <laughs> <laughs> he does, too. He's not even, he's not lying. He's like, Dude, you little shit, start. you're wrong! I'm, I'm doing awesome, have you seen this? I have two people in my bottom lane, and I can't even help middle, and you're fucking dumb! <laughs> I wouldn't go that I'll far. Start. Why are you trying to get CS? Don't tell me what to do! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can't hear you best, damn it. Yeah, you know, we had an Alistair on our team that died, and then just started yelling at me, like, man, this Teemo sucks. <laughs> but, like, I had nothing to do with his death at all. Well, that's was, like a flash uh, in the past. Just yeah, roll reverse. Yeah, yeah, th this poppy sucks. Yeah, well, that, that's something I hear all the time. <laughs> no, that's, hey. that's Red Hurt, Red Hurt, Oslet, or Bottle Lane, Poppy, Poppy Alistar. Yeah. Those There's were a the few Teemo Alistars back in those days, too. Wow. You guys, yeah, it's like sitting around a campfire and listening to you guys talk about well, the old days. This is how the meta was. Ash was middle and Poppy Ellis Tower were bot. Yeah, I actually, I actually forgot about having to do my masteries every game. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. It's just Wait, be like second nature. Your you pick... every game? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, some of them, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll adjust them, but I mean, you know, you have all those pages saved, but back, you know, back in the day when... <laughs> You'd be like well, the one game you'd play a support, and the next game you'd play an AD carry, and you had to, you know, change your mastery pages. <laughs> and there'd always be a time like you'd forget. There'd be like ten seconds left. You'd be like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm a pair yeah. of AP Caitlyn. Yeah. yeah. How come you have? Yeah. How come you have ten AP on Caitlyn? Oh, I'm an what? idiot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, and like you had like different masteries back then too, like oh, they're all different and stuff too. So like if you went like 2109 on like a Maokai, you were screwed. There was no like real cool damn reduction. There's like all damage in the offensive tree. You yeah. Do it. <laughs> yeah, and also like, if, especially if you're jungling, the jungle was, I remember I had so many different rune setups for junglers where now it's like there's a, there's a few, but you know, I had like very specific pages for like Nocturne or Udyr or whoever, and now it seems like you can get away with almost any mastery page for the jungler. It might not be like optimal, but you'll you'll make it through. Yeah, it showed when I was able to jungle three games last night with. Yeah, that should never happen. <laughs> That's when you know your game's out of balance and Renhart can jungle. And yeah, when I can just jungle. <laughs> Riot, take uh, do you, did you guys record those games by any chance? Because I think they should definitely analyze them. Yeah, analyze Renhart doing that. 
Uh, well, I'm going to wrap up T Force 29 this I was week, guys. For $20 a piece. Yeah, you're not selling shit. What you're going to sell is Audible. That's what you're going to sell to everybody. <laughs> Again? Well, no, I just wanted to say that because it was some it was some way to tie Audible into this. So, guys, audibletrial.com forward slash T Force podcast. It's in the URL. Don't forget about the AD carry competition as well. Please sign up for it. You can win $10 an RP a piece, which is a champion. So, the next new champion to come out, you get it for free just for beating me. Which you can get yeah, free should... RP, pretty much a free champion, and you can get a free book. It's unbelievable. We're just giving stuff out here. They're just giving stuff out. Free for three. And if you don't have Nasus, you get him and his skin too. So look at that. Look at that. That's like five. That's hand. a five for one. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you. The Nasus, the best champion in the league. Put first picking Nasus is in, in rank games. Whoever you are, you're listening. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. <laughs> you can last pick Nasus, so you can pick him against certain champions, but if you first pick Nasus, you're going to get face stomped. Yeah, you're looking at probably Teemo or some, <laughs> someone of that else. Nice game, got first pick Nasus. I was like, what the hell is he doing? And then eventually, it just automatically kind of my Renekton and shit all over top lane, right? I don't know. And then said mid. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. All right. Auslander, do you want to take us out this week? Yes, give us a call at 203-494. That's 203-493-6723. Uh, you leave uh, leave the Banhammer a message, and he's the only one of us not playing Diablo 3. So uh, <laughs> let, let him know. Now he sucks in more than one way. Oh. Yeah. He's so sad today, before the podcast. That uh, We should release that audio of, of uh, sad, sad Banhammer. About like, what? You, what you guys mean? are going to play Diablo 3 after this, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play you know League of Legends. That fucker had it, had it bought. He had it pre-ordered. And he's like, well, I'm going to cancel it. I did. I canceled my pre-order. I'm so glad I did. Fuck you guys. Why did you cancel your pre-order? Love- did you not enjoy having fun? Always on DRM. Fuck that shit. I don't support Blizzard anymore. I don't support always on DRM, so I don't buy it. I speak with my wallet, sir. Yup, StarCraft. You know what? Feedback at TrinityForcePodcast.com. You can tell me how much I suck. T-Force Podcast on Twitter. GG Chronicle on Twitter. Check us out at GGC.LeadCraft.com. Watch Tom make hearts with his hands. Guys, we'll catch you next week for T-Force 30. We're only 20 episodes away, which is still quite a, tw- what, just over a year away from, <laughs> or no, what, what, about a year away, right? Six months? It's eight months? I, I can't do October math. October of 2011, do we? November. November, no, October. November. November 1st, 2011. Oh, wow. Wow. I remember because it was All Saints Day. <laughs> Guys. Did we call the what? first podcast? <laughs> we should have. No, no, Day. we called it just Welcome to Trinity Force. So, guys, email us. Let us know. We're out of here. Peace. Peace. Ooh. Bye.